Every week, Francis Lowe makes a round-trip drive on the logging road between the city of Mary on the Borneo coast to the interior mountain town of Barrio. It's the only road linking the coast with this part of the interior. And on days like this, it takes 15 hours to drive one way. And, as rough as it may look, Francis thinks it's pretty good. This drive is just like one of those normal driving we have. Around the world, roads are being built through previously wild areas at a head-spinning pace. One example, Brazil, is currently building 7,500 kilometers of new roads across the Amazon basin. That is equal to the distance from Helsinki to Hanoi. In another example, in the Congo Basin, satellite images show a growing network of logging roads covering nearly 52,000 kilometers. That is 12,000 kilometers more than the circumference of the Earth at the equator. And over 19 years, Malaysian Borneo and Brunei built more than 364,000 kilometers of logging roads, greater than the circumference of Jupiter. Yet roads are two-way streets and experts see them in different ways. The destruction they can cause and the goods they can bring all depend on perspective. A road is the first step to development. A road is the first step to environmental degradation. And in the developing world, despite looks, a road is not only judged by how it's made or what it's made of, but by what it can bring. That's how Francis judges his road and that's how he uses it. He is part of an informal transportation network that brings goods to and from the Borneo Highlands. And, sometimes, those goods are not what you expect. People here love chicken wings. It's a two-way trip, so he carries chicken wings and other big city goods 15 hours into the Highlands and brings home wild deer and boar for his extended family along the coast. Of course, roads can carry much more than chicken wings and venison, if the roads exist. Worldwide, one billion people do not have adequate access to roads and transportation. Isolation is a leading factor in poverty. Some say roads are the single most important indicator of development and the single biggest factor in alleviating poverty. Roads bring jobs. They help children get to school. They help the sick get to doctors and hospitals. Roads pave the way to new markets, offer farmers and producers new sources of income, and increase food security. But others say roads are a first step toward environmental degradation. Increased access to markets through roads can turn environments into commodities. Roads can lead to dams, mines, and forest destruction, all of which takes a toll on the environment. Roads can destroy habitat where rare and endangered animals live. Roads can pave the way for increased hunting and wildlife trafficking. Rural hunters can shift from simply feeding themselves and their families to feeding distant markets. A report in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences notes several studies that found links between road construction and higher rates of infections and potentially lethal diseases. Road construction can leave standing pools of water, which lead to mosquito breeding and an increase in the diseases mosquitoes carry, including malaria and dengue fever. New roads also change the way people meet, interact, and behave, potentially increasing the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. Roads also increase pollution, noise, and stress. Roads can become health and safety hazards in themselves. In 2013, for the first time, the World Health Organization named traffic accidents among the world's top 10 killers. A study by the group Quartz notes that poor countries have half the world's cars, but most of its fatal car accidents. Rural road maintenance is a problem in many developing countries, and the World Bank has said that improperly maintained roads increase safety hazards for those who use them. In another report, the World Bank says that in developing countries, road construction and maintenance costs are high and that it is common for contractors and suppliers to have what they called monopoly powers on projects. That said, 
Between the years 2000 and 2010, the World Bank committed $56 billion to road construction and maintenance projects around the world. About 25% of those projects resulted in allegations of fraud, corruption, or collusion, according to a report by the group Public Intelligence. A report from the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kenya says that many developing countries do not have enough capital, industry, contractors, or supplies to invest in large-scale road construction projects and equipment. Therefore, in many parts of the developing world, roads are often built by hand. That report also noted the extreme manual labor people did in place of machines, clearing trees and brush, removing topsoil and breaking rocks, excavating and hauling soil, gravel and stones, creating roads and filling potholes, and in some places, children join in this work. For Francis, ironically, it's the rural nature and beauty of the Borneo Road that most deeply attracts him. This is beauty. Hidden beauty. <laughs> really. There are more to come on this way. Another two hours you'll be seeing a lot of beauty. In Borneo, as in other places, roads can bring chicken wings to the jungle and take bushmeat to the city. Roads can bring logs to port and take kids to school. They can bring information to isolated lands. And, for better or worse, new roads can show people a slice of the earth they would never see otherwise and introduce them to people they would never otherwise meet. A road is connection. Okay.